wants to print $600 billion without having any responsibility for the resulting inflation. He wants to increase the cost of government without taking any of the blame for the resulting interest payments that households must pay on their own debt after he drove up the rates. Will we see the deficit grow? No. In the fall economic statement, we published some specific fiscal guideposts um, that we said would guide our public finances going forward. We are committed to adhering to those guideposts. Finance Minister Krista Freeland is just days away from her latest budget, and she's already announced more than $18 billion in new spending. Will those commitments increase the size of the deficit already sitting at a projected $40 billion? As you heard in that clip, Freeland was pretty clear she's not going to let it go above the $40 billion outlook from her fall economic statement. But as we were just discussing with pollsters in our last segment, most Canadians already think that number is too high. So just how high are the stakes for the budget for the federal government? Let's bring in the front bench to talk about that. Former BC Premier Christy Clark is with us. She's a senior advisor with Bennett Jones. CTV News political analyst and former Toronto Mayor John Tory is here, as is CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair. Hi, everybody. It's very good to see you. John, I'll, I'll start with you. What do you interpret from the fact that all this new spending has been announced, but that the finance minister is saying we're going to stick to the size of the deficit, like the deficit is going to be where it is or lower? Does that by its nature mean new taxes or something else? No, not necessarily. Like my two friends, I've been through helping craft a whole bunch of budgets and the assumptions you make about revenues and about different things can impact on whether your deficit or lack thereof happens. So I think it's just her you know, being prudent and trying to have it all ways, but the polling indicates that you really can't have it any which way because, you know, your deficit's too big in the eyes of people, but they're talking about all the areas in which they want you to spend more money. And so uh, I just think it's one of those things where as much as anything else, they're just mad about life and they're mad about their own affordability crisis and they're mad at the government. And uh, so I, I'm almost of the view now with all the announcements having made next week's budget actually doesn't mean that much, uh, you know, because it's pretty well all out there, except for maybe a surprise or two that they will always keep back and that they've just got to keep plodding away at this, uh, the odds being against them, but keep plodding away at talking about the things they're talking about and talking to the people they're talking to, the generation they're talking to, and hoping they can see some break in the ice. Is your sense, Christy, that they've taken the wind out of the actual budget or they've added to the kind of oomph they can get out of it by employing the strategy that they have? Well, I think uh, John's right about this. I mean, he's they are they they leak most of the budget and advance the budget now. That's been a thing I think really started in Paul Martin's time and they've these guys have become experts at it. So I think we've seen most of what's going to be in the budget. They get a lot of positive spin on that in advance and the opposition isn't well organized around it because they don't have all the information in front of them in terms of the actual budget. Um, and you know, when she says she's not going to let the deficit grow any more than $40 billion, $40 billion. I mean, that's already a staggering deficit for Canada, for sure. So, um, you know, gee, I hope she meets her target. But, you know, I do think they should be thinking about for the long-term fiscal health of the country. I mean, really, writ small, that means our ability to pay for health care. Um, they should be thinking about how they're going to start downsizing that budget. That would have been, I think, or downsizing that deficit. I think that would have been a better message to send. But as I'm sure John and, um, and Mr. Mulcair would agree, they're not talking to conservatives here. They're trying to talk to federal liberal voters and new Democrat voters in a minority government situation with an election coming up. And this message of kind of cutting the deficit, cutting the uh, debt, is not something that's popular amongst that group that they're trying to speak to right now. Is that your sense as well, Tom? Because the Liberals have been pretty open, and you hear it in the, the wording of what they're saying in all these announcements. It's for this younger generation, uh, fairness for every generation, younger generation who feels like they can't basically enter the middle class. I think that that's the sea change since 2015 when Mr. Trudeau was able to rally those age groups and get them out to vote which is as important as trying to get them to say to a pollster that they like you. Getting them to vote is the next big thing. 
Are they going to stay home in droves as they did the year that Stephen Harper won his majority? They are turned off. They don't believe that what Mr. Trudeau or any other politician right now is saying is actually going to help them and their generation. They are the first generation. You know, those who are under 45 is basically what uh, Trudeau is talking about now. Under 40, more important. They don't think that they've got a chance of ever owning a home. And they're the first generation in Canadian history to lose the grip on that Canadian dream. And they, they simply don't think that that's fair, and they're right. Intergenerational fairness, interestingly enough, is one of the basic foundations of sustainable development. And it's a bit ironic that that argument of fairness between generations is being carried by somebody who doesn't have a strong track record on sustainable development or environment, Pierre Poilievre. But he has managed to connect with young people, saying, you are getting it stuck to you by the people who have been there before. They have failed you. And we're going to be there. We're listening to you. Mr. Trudeau is fighting back with all that he's got. And what he's got is the memory of what the Liberals have done in the past. So he's putting a bunch of new social programs in the window, a lot of new spending in the window. I don't see how they're convincing themselves that it's targeted to that age group. But that's another issue. At the same time, he doesn't mind having a fight with Kualiev on the two things, the increase in spending. And I think that there is going to be an increase in taxes. He'll do like he did in 2015 or 16, actually, with his first budget. He'll he'll milk it for all it's worth. He'll boast about it. He'll say, I believe that the rich should pay. I mean, again, that's a bit rich coming from Justin Trudeau. But he's going to try to say, I've been fighting for you. And now Claudia is going to try, try to take all the social programs away. And he's going to try to give a free pass to the rich. He's going to try to go back to his core. But I don't think it's working, Mashi, to your, your, your essential question. Has he been able to make that connection? and make that sales pitch work with that generation, I don't think it's working. It's interesting, we just spoke to David Coletto, John, uh, from Abacus, who's done the first polling through these announcements from April the 3rd to April 9th. And it's it's among younger Canadians, as Tom points out, that Polyev has like a, a pronounced lead, 20, 20 points or more in that exact cohort. And what's interesting that he noted was like they were the last to leave the Liberals. They were so key to their support before, but they were the last to leave to go to the Conservatives, but, but they have. What would you take from that if you were the Liberals? Well, I take from it that, you know, they, they became very, I think it's been a North American trend that people of that age, especially more men, young men than young women, have become alienated, partly because of the reasons both my friends mentioned, which is they don't feel that the system's working for them. Uh, they don't really feel there's going to be the same place that they saw their parents have in terms of being able to move ahead and so forth and so on. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have expected announcements taking place over two weeks would have an immediate impact on the polls. And anybody who did, yeah. I don't think, understands how polling and public opinion works. I think the best you can hope for, and I didn't see any sign of this in the poll either uh, that I heard about on your on CTV here, was that the, the sort of as I said, the water starting to flow underneath the ice, and then it takes time for the ice itself to start to break up. And uh, that's a long process. It's not a two-week process. And so what they better have ready is a pretty good program for after the budget to keep this going, because if they just have the two weeks of announcements and the budget and then say, well, let's wait for the polls. They're going to be waiting a long time. And so I hope they have a big program. You know, Stephen Harper was better at this than they are in that he, you can agree or disagree, but he ran ad campaigns to, you know, celebrate anything that was something they had done. And that stuff actually works because it just repeats the message over and over again. And these people have been very pure about that. And I think that's politically a big mistake for them at this stage. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I have just one minute left. I wanted to ask Christy that question because they brought in rules because they didn't like when the last government did that. But do you think it's it's kind of handcuffed them from being able to sell their message to people who aren't consuming legacy media right now? Well, I mean, the world has changed a lot, uh, Vashti. I mean, so many people are getting their news. The, those voters, those 50 or 40 under voters are all are really getting their news from Twitter and or, or X and Instagram, really. So I think the world has changed anyway. I'm not sure that these rules have would have made as much difference as we all thought that they might before the advent of social media. But, you know, it's, it is actually the right thing to do to say that we don't want to have all kinds of third government with all of its money, all of our money, spending that just telling us what a great job they're doing because they really should be actually spending that money on cutting taxes, building houses and funding health care. Okay, I'm going to leave it on that note because I have to take a commercial break. On the other